Welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me in our next video. So I thought we'd have a tutorial today. The tutorial will concentrate really on how to put together a patchwork quilt chart or an asset return chart. So we had a previous video and in that video what we did was show and demonstrate the benefits of diversification by having a multi-asset class portfolio. And to demonstrate that further, what we did was we had the animation of a patchwork quilt showing you that regardless of the year, most assets will move against each other and the top ranking asset always changes on a year by year basis. So in this way, we want to show you that it's better to have all your eggs in different baskets and have as much diversification as possible so that in one year, a poorly performing asset is offset by another asset class, which might be doing a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll go onto Excel and we'll, we'll look at how to put this particular chart together. And hopefully in that way, we can get even more better understanding of diversification. So what I'll do now is go into Excel. So when we're putting this together in Excel, there's three things really that we should be thinking about. Time, asset and performance. And I think the best place to start is the asset. So what you see here in this first table is the different asset classes. There's 10 of them here. And you need a proxy really for your asset. So what I've used in this particular table is ETFs. Now you don't need to use ETFs as your proxy. You can use the actual indices. So for instance, Japan is Nikkei or the topics. So you can use that. You can go onto the website, pull off information about the particular index. But that's it. Really, once you've got your information, it's all about color coding it. That's it. That's, that's very simple. That's all I've done here. Uh, I've represented it in a way that I feel that it would be quite attractive. But you want the colors to really be as distinct and diverse as possible. Having done that, what you should be thinking about then is performance. And so what you see here in this particular table is the performance of those particular ETFs split out on a year by year basis. Now, the time, the time is really down to you and what you might perceive as long-term. I perceive long-term as anything longer than five years. And I think you get much more meaning from 10 years plus, but it's down to you as to the periods that you want to use. And also it depends on the product. Some products might not have been available 10 years ago. So you can be hamstrung by that. Now the valuation date I've used is the 31st of March. I've used the 31st of March because I actually put this table together quite a few months ago and I'm just going back over it. Now you can use the end of the year if you want to represent the calendar year performance. What I did in my own particular circumstance was show the returns to the last month end. And I did that to get a better feel for current performance numbers. But it's up to you. Once you've done that, you can then filter or now once you've done that, you can just start the ranking of your numbers depending on which was the best and which was the worst. And you can do that by using Excel to do the sorting for you. And that's it. What you end up with is this particular table here. You can see it's showing you the returns of different asset classes over time. 
So there it is. That's how to put the asset class returns table together, also called a patchwork quilt. So let's think about the benefits there might be for you in actually going through this particular exercise. Well, the first point I would make is that you can track this over the next 15, 20, 25 years if you so wish. And in that way, you can see whatever patterns and trends that have emerged based on different asset classes over time. A second point I would make is that you don't actually have to use multi-asset class. If you're a big fan of cryptocurrency, you can actually just track this particular table using Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum if you want. Or you might be a huge fan of just equities and you might think multi-asset class in investing is not really for you. So in that way, you can subdivide the equity sector so you can have the communications subsector, you can have mining, you can have consumer discretionary, you name it. Now, another point I would make and how this might be useful for you is that you want to perhaps get your kids into investing. This is a great way and a great project, actually, because it's using data, research, lots of nice colours, and it's putting together all of this information into a lovely little chart. So in that way, you're having some practical exercise being done rather than just theor theoretically looking at numbers. But I would like to hear from you about the benefits that you can see from putting this particular chart together. So please comment, please provide any suggestions and I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like and subscribe and I'll speak to you all very soon.